Okay, welcome to the third unit. Um, this actually shows up when we're we're doing some algebra where we're expanding binomials. And so, uh, just as a warm up, like what, just as a review, I'd like what you to do is to to expand up to x plus y cubed, and then um, and then see if you can figure out a pattern that's that's actually developing. And so, if you want to work on that, and then just pause it, and, and I'm going to start right away. So x plus y to the 0 is actually 1. Uh, anything to the 0 is 1. x plus y to the 1 is just x plus y. x plus y squared, if we expand it, is uh, x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And if we take that and then multiply it by x plus y, we get x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. So we start to notice a pattern here. If you look over at Pascal's triangle, uh, you got that 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. You can notice that the 1, 3, 3, 1 shows up here. And so the next guy is actually 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 in Pascal's triangle. That's that row. And the, the variables are actually pretty predictable as well. Like we know the first term is going to be x to the 4 because uh, it's going to be x times x times x times x. And then y to the 4 will be the last term because we do have a y times y times y times y. And in the middle, like, we, we actually just get x cubed is actually going to go down in degree. So x cubed, x squared, x, and then no x's. And then y is actually going to go up. So that in each term, we always have four variables, three x's and a y, two x's and two y's. And so if you look at Pascal's triangle, the next row is row 5, which is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And those are the actually the coefficients on... Pascal's triangle. And so you got x to the 5, x to the 4, x to the 3, x to the 2, x to the 1, and then no x's, and then no y's, y, y squared, y cubed, y to the 4, y to the 5. And so we're actually going to see how we actually use that. If you're not sure how to generate Pascal's triangle, it really just starts with the 1. And then when you have numbers above, you just add them together and get the number below. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 10 plus 10 is 20. And that's how the tr the triangle gets generated. Pascal's tri Pascal is uh, here's a little bit of bio form off uh, off just the internet here. And uh, the main thing like we're gonna actually see is is his invention of, like just where he was instrumental in probability theory. This is something that we're gonna look at for grade twelve data management. So I just want to talk about that for a second. This stuff here is really not anything you need to know. It's just kind of more interesting than anything than anything else. And so there's a bunch of patterns in Pascal's triangle. Take a look at the sum of the rows. If you add up each of the rows, what do you get? And so we notice that we get 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. And then like the last row here would be 2 to the 8. And so whatever row we are in, so this is row 8, because it starts with an 8 after the 1, and it's 2 to the power of 8. Uh, that's tremendously important when we get into combinations in grade 12. Prime numbers is, is a little bit interesting as well. Any prime number row has um, all the numbers in there are factors of the prime. And so we can see uh, 3, 3, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, 1, 7, 20, 1, 35. That's where, that's where it really starts to become apparent. And if you look back at the triangle, if you have like... Uh, like a prime number like 11, these are all factors of 11, or all multiples of 11. 13, these are all multiples of 13. So that's, that's, that gets pretty interesting. Okay. Okay. And the hockey stick pattern is, is also very helpful. If you take the shaft of the stick, like it, it will add up to the part where you hit the puck with. Um, and anywhere you do that, you can you can actually get it, and it does become a handy way to add up like numbers from one to six. You get twenty one. Magic eleven. This one's probably my favorite one, um, although it's maybe the the least useful. Um, every row is the power of eleven. So um, one is eleven to the zero. Uh, one one is eleven. Eleven to the one. One two one is eleven times eleven. One three three one is eleven times eleven times eleven. One four six four one is eleven to the four, and so on and so on. When you push it together, 
then it seems to fall apart when you get to the fifth row, but does it really like 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1? And we can just carry the ones and we get the answer 16, 10, 51. That's, that becomes really interesting, although maybe not that useful. And then the most useful thing that we see in high school with Pascal's triangle next to so what we're going to do today is um, using combinations. So this number, for example, 10 is the number of ways to group five, three people, 0, 1, 2, 3, third number in. Uh, that's not 1. We always count this as number 0, number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5, out of 5 people. So the number of ways to group 3 out of 5. 28 is the number of ways to group 8 out of 2, or 2 out of 8 objects. And uh, 35 is the number of ways to group um, 4 out of 7. Now, if we're talking about groups, something like the lottery is uh, like would be like the 49th row, and we want to find out how many groups of six. We go, so we go to the 49th row and go over the sixth number, and that's the number of ways to like play the lottery. So this does have implications in probability. Okay, so back to what we need it for. Um, it's really helpful just to look at this step by step because these are the steps I would do these kind of questions in. Uh, rather than actually write this out four times and start to expand, we can actually use Pascal's triangle. So we start off with the coefficients and leave gaps between. Then we start to fill in the pattern. So we saw an x in every term. We saw a negative 2 in every term. And we know that we start off with a 4 exponent and it goes down each time in the x. And we go to zero, but like this really doesn't show up. So because anything to the zero is one, and then we start at zero and go up each time on the negative two. Negative two to the zero is one, and and x to the zero is one. So really, what you just get is one. And so what we're really doing is is multiplying all this together. That's the common mistake most people make is when they see this minus, they think they have to maybe distribute the four to both the x cubed and the negative two. But notice that there are uh, five terms here, and there should be five terms in the answer to maintain equivalence. Um, but also it's helpful to write down any of the numbers that you're not sure of right away, just so that there's less to do after, because all we're doing is multiplying. So negative 2 to the 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 cubed is negative 8. And negative 4 squared to the 4 is is positive 16. So what we're going to do now is multiply. 1 times x to the 4 times 1 gives me x to the 4. 4 times x cubed times negative 2 gives me negative 8x cubed. 6 times x squared times positive 4 is 24x squared. And 4 times x times negative 8 is negative 32x. And lastly, 1 times 1 times 16 is 16. And we can see that there are five terms, just like there were five coefficients in Pascal's triangle. The first one is x to the 4. The last one is 16, as we probably should expect. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And the middle terms are those numbers multiplied together. The second example kind of has everything in it that you would need to do, and so it's a really good all-inclusive example. Um, we still set up the same pattern. We use the fifth row of Pascal's triangle and leave gaps. We put 3x in every term and negative 5y in every term. We count down from 5 for the 3x, and we count up, for, or up from 5, or sorry, count down from 5 the other way, for the 5y so that every one of them has five variable parts. Okay? We write down the things that we know right away. Like 3 to the 5 is 243. Like I don't want to do that in the last step. 3 to the 4 is 81. Um, 3 to the 3 is 27. 5 squared is 25. Uh, it's going to be positive. This one's going to be negative. Because it's to to the one, and this one's negative to the because it's to the three. Uh, three squared is nine, and five cubed is one twenty-five. But it is a negative. It should have a negative because it's negative five times negative five times negative five. 
5 to the 4 is 625, and 5 to the 5 is 3125, which I forgot to put there. And just multiplying them, we get 1 times 243 times 1, which is 243, and then it's x to the 5 is the variable part. 5 times 81 times 5 times negative 5 is negative 2025. We got 4x's and 1y. Uh, 10 times 27 times 25 is 6,750. 3x's and 2y's. Notice how the x's still kind of follow that pattern and the y's as well. 10 times 9 times 125 is 11,250. x squared y cubed. 5 times 3 times 625 is 9,375. x, y to the 4. And then the 3,125 minus, because it's, it's to the 5, an, an, even, an odd number of times, y to the 5. And that's the final answer. Okay. So again, we've got five. So we got six terms, just like we'd expect. Just like that's the number of coefficients we have. Um, we expect 243x to the 5, because that's 3x times 3x times 3x. And then 3125y to the 5, because that's negative 5y times itself 5 times. Okay?